Hello everyone. I wanted to share with you today a new capability that we've added to our optimization program, EQR Opt, and that's the capability to do diplexers and multiplexers. Uh, we're very excited about this. I think this will be uh, a very interesting um, feature for users. So here we have a, a simple diplexer. Uh, we're using the phasing method, the well-known phasing method, where we take our two filter channels and we add a length of line here such that the impedance of this channel is rotated to an open circuit at the common junction in the band center of this channel. And vice versa, we add a length of line here so that the impedance of this filter is rotated to an open circuit at the common junction in the center of the opposite channel. And the uh, advantage of this technique and our optimization technique is that you can start with doubly terminated filters. There's no need to design uh, special singly terminated filters uh, to make this method work. So here's our channel one filter. It's an N equal 12 uh, comb line filter that we designed with the uh, CCL program. And here's the doubly ter terminated response of that filter. And then here's the uh, channel two filter and it's doubly terminated response. So we hook those two together. And if we look at the uh, existing top level response, I've already adjusted my line lengths to be um, pretty close to optimum. Uh, there actually isn't an, ex an exact answer or an exact solution here, but if we, if we tune on those line lengths, we can see how the, the two channels uh, interact with each other. And generally we're looking for uh, a good match at band center. And if we can realize a starting point with pretty good match at band center in general, the optimization will pull in. So let's give it a try with this starting point here. And if we open up uh, the optimization program, the interface is very similar to the old program. The only thing we've changed here is it's a little bit different when it asks you for what schematic you want to work on. So in this case, we've organized our project with uh, three schematics. We've got the individual channels and the top level um, diplexed uh, schematic. So in this case, we'll tell it to look for variables on all the schematics, and we'll tell it that the top level schematic is uh, the one called MUX. So it assumes that port one on that top level uh, schematic is the common junction. And that's basically all we need to tell it. So if we look at our final result here and hit the go button on the optimizer, it will uh, pull this into an exact equal ripple response quite quickly. And we can do it one more time just to make sure it's perfectly equal ripple. But as you can see, at least by eye, those, those two channels are, are perfectly equal ripple. One advantage of this multi-schematic approach is if something goes wrong or if we were experimenting with different um, manifold networks, we can easily bring this uh, back to a known starting point we can go look at our channel one filter and with the optimizer tell it, okay, bring that one back to doubly terminated. So we can do that very quickly. And we can do the same thing with channel two and go over here and select channel two. And we'll bring that one back to doubly terminated. And now we're back to our starting point we're back to our original starting point. So that's uh, one advantage of using the multiple schematic approach. And in another example, in a few minutes, I'll show you what the single schematic approach uh, looks like. So this, this is an easy problem. We've got two channels here that are 100 megahertz wide 
and they're spaced 100 megahertz apart. What happens as we bring these closer and closer together? Well, the problem gets more difficult because there is more interaction between the two. But the surprising thing is, is you can bring those two quite close together and um, get the diplexing uh, to work. So if we look at uh, this next example, now we're going to start with the same 100 megahertz wide channels, but now they're only an eighth of a channel apart instead of being one full channel width apart. So um, this, they're fairly close together here. So again, we've got our same two uh, N equal 12 uh, filters here and our same approach here with the, the phasing networks. The phasing lengths are going to be a little bit different in this case because we're um, closer together. And we can look at the real and imaginary parts and see that you know our goal is to get the um, real part of Y in to be equal ripple around 0.02 and we want the imaginary part to ripple around zero. And obviously we're, we're pretty close already uh, with, the, with the proper phasing. So if we go back to the uh, upper level MUX, we can use the optimizer again and it will tell it, yeah, look at all the schematics and MUX is the top level schematic. And when we hit the optimize button, And again, we've made it perfectly equal ripple. Now, what if we want to make this uh, contiguous? Well, at this point, the way we do it is we'll take this problem as a starting point and sim simply walk the two channels uh, in toward each other. And we do that by uh, setting the band edge frequencies here in, the, um, uh, in each schematic and we can we can move those in this case probably um, a megahertz at a time and just walk these two channels in closer together so that process does take a little while but i've got a um, finished project here and this what this is what it looks like uh, when you walk the two channels in successfully and notice we've got you know perfect return loss across the uh, crossover region of the diplexer. And if we go back and look at the real and imaginary parts, uh, again, they're perfect in the crossover regions. They sum to 0.02 here for the real part and they're summing to zero uh, for the imaginary part. Now in this case, because they are so close together, if we were to go back and you know, try to force this back to its doubly terminated condition and force the other channel back to its doubly terminated condition, it would probably fail. Um, so in these, in the contiguous case, you know, you may have to go back a few steps and walk it in again if for some reason the, uh, the process fails. So that's a simple diplexer example. 